Everyone, in this video, I'm gonna show you the best time to buy each of the following ETFs. We've been making a lot more ETF content lately and have gotten a lot of positive feedback on the videos. ETF investing is a phenomenal way to invest. By avoiding mutual fund fees and buying month in and month out, you can match the market and potentially, as we'll explain in this video, even market beating returns over time. I'm Paul. And I'm Mo. And we have been investing in ETFs and individual stocks for over 20 years. Not only do we have the passion for teaching, but our goal is to help make sure you become a seasoned investor capable of achieving your investing goals, whether it's through ETFs or individual stocks. To help bolster your ETF investing knowledge and help you find a good investing process, in this video, we'll showcase three popular ETFs that can all be great additions to your portfolio. We'll cover the basics of each one and the best time to buy shares of all of them. But stick around until the end of this video because I'll give you my full summarized strategy for when you should buy each of these three ETFs. ETF number one, VOO. That's the Vanguard 500 ETF. This ETF matches the S&P 500 index, which consists of the top 500 companies in the United States. It's a passively managed fund, and with that, it has an expense ratio of 0 0.03, and you get to be a part owner of the top 500 companies in the United States. The best way to buy VOO is also the most simple way to buy. Every month, you take a set amount of money to invest and put that money into VOO, whether it's your IRA, brokerage account or any other tax efficient account. Sometimes you're going to buy high and barely get a single share. Other times you'll buy low and acquire multiple shares. This is called dollar cost averaging. The big key is to stick with it and buy every single month like clockwork. You have to be a robot about this buying every single month and you can do quarterly, weekly, whatever works for you as long as it's systematic and you do it over and over again. The strategy is simple, but it's not easy. Mentally, it's very hard to buy when everything is tanking. Your friends and your family and everybody on the news is all saying it's bad and everything is going to go to zero and it's never going to come back. You have to have the emotional fortitude to stick with the process. Dollar cost averaging into the VOO ETF, regardless of the outside noise, because over time, the market has returned an average of 9.9%. And this is through depressions, recessions, wars, terrorist attacks, bubbles, all kinds of market fluctuations. Stick to your process and watch your savings go up. So a lot of people in our community will ask me, Uncle Paul, shouldn't I be investing in foreign markets too? What if China takes over the world and the US economy crumbles? If it makes you feel better to invest in a foreign market, absolutely go for it. More power to you. It's more important that you feel comfortable with whatever you're doing. To that point, Think of the international influence that top American companies have, Apple, Meta, and Nike. Those are just a few that are prevalent all around the world. So in a way, you are already investing in foreign economies just by investing in VOO. But by all means, if you wanna get more exposure to foreign markets and companies that are located over there, find a great low cost emerging markets ETF and follow the same process that you would do for any of the other ETFs we're talking about here today. All right, ETF number two, the QQQ, Invesco QQQ Trust. This is a popular index fund and it's the NASDAQ 100. And it's a very tech heavy ETF in relation to the S&P 500. There are 100 companies in the NASDAQ. So you own a higher percentage of the top holdings than you would with say VOO. The expense ratio is a little bit higher too, 0.2% versus 0.03, but still much smaller than a typical mutual fund. Investing in QQQ is capable of bringing you even higher returns than the market average, thereby allowing you to beat the market. However, there is a specific strategy behind this, like dollar cost averaging. It is harder to do emotionally because of those volatile fluctuations due to tech. Here, you're buying QQQ as it falls in price big time. For example, if another crash like the COVID crash hits or the dot-com crash hits, the tech-heavy NASDAQ will plummet in price and your job will be to buy it up. People will be telling you that tech is dead. There'll be some story attached to all of the negativity there of the markets going down, that the market will never come back, that it's going to zero. But when has the market overall ever died and never come back? Never. The tech of today will be the blue chips of tomorrow. The tech of yesterday are the blue chips of today. And NASDAQ's holding will always be 
tech-based, and constantly changing with today's innovation, with the modern day innovation. So by investing in QQQ during downtimes, you can earn a solid 2% per year beat. It's all about sticking to the process. I wanna make clear though, since this is technically a riskier play, use this strategy while you're young and after the market has already done some sort of correction or crash and fallen substantially. I think currently with the way the tech market is, it's massively overpriced and you're probably gonna be just as great investing in SPY from today's valuations. We love talking about the emotional mindset needed to buy stocks and ETFs. We've made thousands of videos on it. So consider subscribing to help foster your mindset and become a better investor. Now, finally, ETF number three, the Schwab Dividend ETF SCHD. This ETF is a collection of dividend stocks all in one fund, including Broadcom, Amgen, Coca-Cola. And just like the others, it has a low expense ratio sitting at just 0.06%. SCHD historically has had very similar returns to VOO and the S&P 500. So is it smart to dollar cost average into SCHD no matter when, just like you would with VOO? It can be, but at that point, I believe you should just invest in VOO. The S&P 500 essentially is the market. So why not invest the majority of your money into the top 500 companies in the US at any given time? Okay, so what I did was I pulled up SCHD and I'm putting it into our eight pillar portfolio in our software. What that's gonna do is it's gonna take the top 25 companies, I put the top 25 in there, and I put them in our eight pillar portfolio to see as a whole, how they look as an individual company. Because a lot of people, including Warren Buffett, would say you should take your portfolio and assign the metrics of the business like you own one company. So that's what the eight pillar portfolio is supposed to do for us. So right here, I have a top 25 company. Coca-Cola, Texas Instruments, uh, Verizon, 3M, a bunch of companies. Guys, overall, it's actually pretty good. The only X it has is based on long-term liabilities greater than five years of free cash flow. But I would argue that these companies are all pretty big companies that can probably withstand a little more debt. But overall, as a group, they're selling for about 20 times PE earnings and only 18 times free cash flow. I say only 18 because it's lower than the earnings. So I like the fact that this group of companies has a lower ratio of free cash flow than earnings, buying back about 5% of their shares the last five years, a, about a 9.35% 9, 9 ROIC, which isn't huge, but isn't it's at least about the market what it does. So overall, I'm looking at this saying, this is awesome. Overall, $3.7 trillion market cap in these top 25, they generate 1.65 trillion in revenue, 207 billion in, in profit, 218 billion last year in free cash flow, paying a 3.4% dividend overall as a portfolio. That's the attractiveness of SCHD. It's high yielding big companies. So overall, when it comes to this group of companies, you're probably gonna do just fine. Are you gonna do amazing? No, as we've seen from the results, SCHD matches the market. But if your goals are to generate more income, this could be a way to do it. But don't fall for that trap that Dividends are just extra income. They are not, it's not free money. When you get paid that dividend, you're paying an extra tax. Granted, I understand a lot of you would buy it in your tax deferred account, but when they take money out of their bank account and put it into your bank account, then they're decreasing the value of their business because that business doesn't have the cash anymore. Nonetheless, there is a right time to invest in SCHD and it's right before retirement in my opinion. There's a lot of talk about living off your dividends and retirement is the best time to do that. It allows you to get dividend income while also being invested in companies that still has some growth potential through normal capital growth. In retirement, if your goal is to focus on the dividends you're getting in, this would be a good option. As long as you don't need to pull extra money off your capital account, because there still will be fluctuations in those prices. Because as you saw, the 25 stocks are still stocks that are major stocks that can have a lot of volatility, but you should be able to consistently get income and not to worry about getting in and out of different companies. So in summary, buy VOO month in, month out using a dollar cost average strategy and start it as soon as you can. You want time on your side. Buy QQQ when the tech sector is down. And if you're young, dollar costs average into it at those low prices. And as it continues to rise, just keep doing it. I don't recommend now starting on QQQ based on where valuations are for tech. Could that be incorrect? Absolutely. 
But if you look back at history, based on starting at the peak of the tech bubble, you would not have outperformed the S&P by fractional percentage points. So might as well wait for a pullback. Finally, buy SCHD if you're close to retirement and want more consistent income and maybe a little bit less volatility. Thanks so much for watching and let me know which ETF you're looking to buy in the comments below. To learn more about these ETFs and to continue to develop your ETF investing process, be sure